Dear July, so the last video was rough. Let's move on. I found I'm reading fewer books because I want to talk about them online. So today, a review of All the Bright Places by Jennifer and Aven. Trigger warnings include suicide, depression, physical abuse, and grief. All the Bright Places was introduced to me as the book to read if you like The Fault in Our Stars by John Green or Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell both of which have become benchmarks for contemporary young adult fiction. To be clear, I enjoy all three of these books. They both contain themes of romance, tragedy, and illness, and are all easily categorized as coming-of-age stories. But I don't think All the Bright Places needs to be compared to these other stories. It might be helpful in making a clear recommendation, but the story stands on its own merit. So what's the story about? Well, the focus is on the two main characters, Finch and Violet. The point of view in the story shifts between the two of them and almost everything they think is about each other. Both of them serve as unreliable narrators though because they are dealing with undiagnosed mental illnesses. The pair are partnered up for a school project where they must explore the wonders of their home state of Indiana. The two of them decide to find every interesting, unique, and obscure attraction in the state. On these adventures, these wanderings, the pair grow closer and eventually begin a romantic relationship with one another. Well, the romance aspect of All the Bright Places is written amazingly well. It's genuine and has a slow buildup as they get to know each other. It just surprised me how natural all of this felt. Honestly, the writing was so delicately realistic that I decided to buy the author's other book. I do have some issues with the way the story portrayed and treated mental illness. I appreciated that it was honest and never treated mental illness as anything less than serious, but this is definitely not the book for people who already have a mental illness particularly depression. This book is written hyper-realistically at times. That means a lot of the things the characters experienced were similar to how I experienced my own symptoms. If I were in a depressive state when I was reading this, it most likely would have caused me to spiral. So it's not a book for people with mental illnesses, but I would recommend it to everyone who loves someone with depression, as it might help you better empathize with and understand your loved one. I also have some issue with Finch being a manic pixie dream boy. Both of the main characters are sick, but Finch tries to help Violet recover and with some success. But I'm a bit worried about this trope that tells people that their mental health will be secure if they're in a romantic relationship because that is very much so not the case. Romantic relationships are not a good or lasting cure for your brain not operating in a healthy way. I think Neven tried to show this, but I don't know if I would have understood that if I had read this book a few years ago. Both of the main characters also do have access to the help they need, one with far more support than the other, which can show intersections between mental health and masculinity as well as mental health and trauma because even though Violet has more support, it is because she suffered a tragedy that everyone knows about and it seems people's patience with her recovery is dwindling. Neither of the characters take advantage of or seek out the resources designed to help them in this story even though they need it. This serves as a cautionary tale because of that, and I would heavily encourage everyone to seek a professional medical help for their mental health and to treat their brains as an organ that does need medical help and checkups to ensure that it operates in a beneficial and healthy way. Just like the rest of your organs receive medical attention, your brain should too. So in the mess of thoughts I have about this book, I walked away from it wanting to help people, wanting to appreciate the weird and obscure, but also to appreciate and call attention to the everyday occurrences and places of beauty and generosity in my life. This book made me want to make the world I live in a more lovely place. For that, I would give the book four out of five post-it notes as it is a spectacular novel, and I hope you will consider reading it. Love, Katrina. Script, please subscribe, watch another video of mine, or support me on Patreon. And hey, I love you.